Welcome to Podocyte Talk. Today we delve into three impactful studies addressing uh, cardiovascular health, innovative therapies for hereditary chronic kidney disease, and outcomes in kidney transplantation. The first study explores the interplay of left atrial and right ventricular function in chronic kidney disease patients using cardiac magnetic resonance imaging. This cross-sectional analysis of 58 chronic kidney disease patients and 26 healthy controls revealed significant impairments in right ventricular and left atrial function in chronic kidney disease, including increased right ventricular volumes and reduced strain parameters. Notably, left atrial strain and right ventricular global longitudinal strain emerged as independent predictors of chronic kidney disease severity, even with preserved left ventricular ejection fraction. These findings underscore the importance of right ventricular and left atrial dysfunction as early indicators of cardiovascular complications in chronic kidney disease. The second study investigates the use of sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors in patients with Alport syndrome, a hereditary form of chronic kidney disease. In a multicenter observational study involving 112 Alport syndrome patients, sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitor therapy significantly reduced albuminuria greater than 30% over follow-ups of up to 32 months. The mean estimated glomerular filtration rate decline was 9 milliliters per minute per 1.73 square meters after one year, with adverse events occurring at a low rate of 0.24 events per patient year. These findings suggest that sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors, when combined with renin-angiotensin system inhibition, may provide significant benefits in reducing albuminuria in Alport syndrome, although further research is needed to determine long-term effects on chronic kidney disease progression. The third study examines membranous nephropathy recurrence after kidney transplantation. This prospective multicenter study in France included 72 patients awaiting transplantation and a retrospective cohort of 65 patients for validation. The cumulative incidence of membranous nephropathy recurrence was 26% at 23.5 months in the prospective cohort and 28% at 67 months in the retrospective cohort. Pre-transplant antiphospholipase A2 receptor 1 antibodies were identified as a strong predictor of recurrence with a risk ratio of 5.9. Interestingly, recurrence occurred early post-transplantation, median of 5 months, even as antibody levels decreased highlighting the limited utility of post-transplant antibody monitoring. These findings emphasize the need for individualized immunomonitoring and management strategies for kidney transplant candidates with antiphospholipase A2 receptor 1-associated membranous nephropathy. Together, these studies highlight the evolving landscape of chronic kidney disease management, from cardiovascular risk assessment and innovative drug therapies to optimizing outcomes in kidney transplantation. Join us on Podocyte Talk as we bring you the latest insights shaping kidney and cardiovascular care. Tune in now to stay informed.